Big hillside views and landscapes like this one in northwest Scotland can give a geologist a rapid insight into the structure. Capturing and interpreting views is best done by sketching, so let's see how to do it. OK, so we're on the edge of the Bene Nature Reserve and let's go up the hill because we're going to get a spectacular view onto some really stunning geology over there. Um, and let's have a look at that. It's always worth gaining a little height to reduce the effects of foreshortening when looking onto hillsides. And it's certainly worth getting up above the tree line. So that's the view we're going to get. The trick is to get ourselves comfortable so we can get some good sketching in and we're not too blown around by the breeze that's happening at the moment. So let's get comfortable. Okay, so some kit. We've got a compass. I've got my phone which I'll use to take photographs of the sketch as I go. I've got a topo map that we'll use to locate things and I've got some pencils sharp sharp and ready to go and my sketch block and this is my field notebook I'd much rather use an A4 it gives me plenty of room to work with and um, I can uh, draw sketches around the edges and annotate and it's made with good quality cartridge paper um, so it'll survive a bit of um, drizzle and so forth. So let's go to the right page. Here we go. Here's my next page. And the first thing we need to do is get our location. So on the map, I can look at um, the topo map in here, find the path that we walked up the nature trail. And we are at 995647. 995647. Okay, so that just puts my location in. The next thing we need to do is to decide the view that we're going to get and then we're going to frame it out. Now, it's really important when making a sketch to really try and honour the geometric relationships. It's really what we're doing, that's why we're sketching, is to force us to make decisions about how things relate to one another. And the trick is to not have vertical exaggeration or to reduce that as much as possible. And the way to do that in, with a view is to grid it out. And it looks super pretentious, but I'm going to use the pencil as a scale, full arm's length like that, and that's one unit at arm's length, the pencil upright. And the mountain is one unit high. So I've got one unit up and my sketch is across. I'll turn it sideways and just measure across from where that stream enters the loch there. One, two, three, four. So one by four are the proportions in there. So one, two, three, four by one. And I'll draw the loch in because it's a horizontal line at the foot of the sketch. And just to show what we've got, I'll take the photograph. Okay, so let's next draw in the topographic outline. So that's one and a half up to there. So we come out from the water's edge, one and a half, one and a half puts it there. And I'm just gonna silhouette in the hillside that comes down fairly steeply and then swoops off down into the valley. And that's where our river comes down and up and in front that's a bit steep actually let's put it slightly more gentle that's better like that it doesn't matter if we get the odd mistake just silhouette it round then over to that shoulder is to there and that's a little bit higher so that goes like that and down like that and then that bit there is about a half a pencil to so about there so we got the main summit and then couple down and it comes down like that and it drops down about half a height which takes it down to about there that gradient is about what 45 degrees something like that and down and then there's this long rambling bit of plateau 
that comes down like that. So a quick snapette of that silhouette. There we go, very simple silhouette. And I'll just add nicely sunlit in front. There's this nice hill, which looks interesting. While I'm sketching this on, I'm obviously paying attention to the landscape a bit. So I'm gradually getting my eye in to some features. And as the sun comes and goes, you get an idea of perspective as well, which is also useful to try and get some idea of. And there's a ridge that comes down here. That ridge comes down like that. There. Normally I'd be using a, an HB pencil, but to bring it out, to make it photograph better, I'm using a 2B, which means it's a bit crude. But there we go. So there is the sketch that we'll work from. Next thing we need to do is to orient it. So compass, take bearings onto some prominent features. So there's a prominent feature up there, which has got a bearing of 030. Where's my pencil? There we go. So that's 030. And I'll mark that on. And then the top of Slioch, which is obviously fairly prominent, I can put that on there. That's about, yeah, 008. So that gives an idea of the aperture of view. I'll just put that stream on, which is the very edge of my sketch. which is 060, right over there, okay, 060. There we go. So I've got the aperture of the view. It's not 180 degrees, it's a narrow window. Um, that's important to get these bearings, to get the locations right. Um, when we come to draw a cross section, yes, we can draw it with a full 180 degrees as though it was a, a single plane, but our view is certainly not that. So we've got the bearings onto that. Next thing to do is to put some places on so we know where we are and to get the scale at the same time. So we can use the topo map to zoom in some places. I'm going to start off with the top of Sliach, which is kind of obvious. Um, and the top of Sliach at the far end is 981 metres, right at the far end, 981. And there's another top with a trig point on, which is the one with that, that corner there, 980. And I'll write Sliach, which is its name, across the top. That shoulder I started on is Skurdu. And that is 738 meters. So there's two obvious points, or three, along the skyline. We drop down that still rather nicely sunlit knoll is that, and that's 303 meters. Anything else? Yeah, there's another spot height like, down in that little quarry there where that little waterfall is just in front of it. And that's 86 metres. So right down there is 86. Uh, and what about the loch? I'm not opening the map up fully here. Stop it blowing around. Well, that must be about 15 metres above sea level. So, and I'll write Loch Marie. There we go. So, and a quick snap. Okay, so that's been useful because it's given us the scale and we see that there's about a kilometre of vertical relief in there. Um, so that's yeah, not an insubstantial hillside for this part of the world. Good, so that's now what we're gonna do is put the geology on and we're gonna use this as a template. So, um, a quick time out while I sharpen my pencil. Okay. So let's get some geology on. And I'm going to look really carefully now at some of the main units that we can see in here. There's two main rock types I can see. Um, there will be more, but there's two main ones. And I can see a top package that's reasonably horizontally layered coming across. It goes all the way up to the mountains, generates some red scree down there. And then these lower slopes include that rather nice little hill and this more massive rounded grey material. I'm going to start with the grey material and just put, put it on and I can't really see much structure in it so I'm just going to put it in, in patches of red and I'm using a sort of a swirly cut texture so as not to imply too much about the structure. It's quite important if you're putting some texture on the paper not to imply more than is really there geologically so I'm not going to use random sketches. I'm just putting in some rock in here just to get an idea and like as I say I can't really see anything very much in here it's getting a bit breezy here so that's that lot in here quick photograph there right now I'm going to turn my attention to the unit on top and I'm just to bring out some some trends in this 
just starting off on the really simple bits, the stuff that is obvious, just coming around like that. And I'm just building it up, starting in the simple. The air is, in, by simple, I mean the stuff that's really easy to see. I'm not going to overplay it. Don't want to overplay it. And just use the line work just to bring out what's going on. I can see that coming through there, and there's a layer comes from slightly lower like that, across like that. Quite a big sequence that runs up through the middle there. Something like that, and a one that comes around the corner like that, just to give you a flavor of what's going on. Try and do this without getting the shadow all over it. Okay, so I'm gonna add a color to this now, which is my rock unit for the upper one. I'm using brown just to make it distinct from the red I used for the other one. And again, I'm using my texture on this just to mimic the trend of the layering I picked out with my pencil work, like that. <laughs> Incidentally, it's always worth having some elastic bands. I came out without any, because then you can keep your pages under control. Right, a bit more to do now. Those are the easy bits. Now, the middle of the sketch is a bit empty, so, and it's, that's largely because there's quite a lot of screen. I'll just give a bit of hint to that with some pencil work. But I can just about pick out a bit more layering in the middle, just to show that's real. I'll put some brown with it, a bit more in there. Now, what about that waterfall near 0.86 meters? I can see the brown in, in there. It's making horizontal ledge going across like that. So again, a mixture of brown work and the pencils bring out that. So again, just to complete that, let's just do a quick snap. There we go. Right, so now let's think about how the contacts work because there must be a contact that goes around that hill down like this, another one that comes over the hill down to 86 meters and then back up this valley. It's a bit more in there actually, I've missed, there's a stream. So as I pick the contact out, I'm looking even more closely at where the boundary goes and what the rocks are on either side. That's the really critical ground, put the extra bits in there. And there's a shoulder next to it, which is more of the red, going up like this to the plateau top. So that plateau oil over there looks like it's this massive material and the bedded stuff layered anyway, horizontally layered that goes up to Sliok, is Sliok sitting in that trough, which is the texture I've got in my sketch. Let me try that. Okay, so that's interpret that's, well, that's the view, not that interpreted. The next thing we need to do is to capture the interpretation of this in a cross section. And I'll just do this here by just skylining in the topography something like that, draw the lock level, oops, that's not very horizontal, something like that. Okay, again, a really simple outline, nothing fancy there. And that will become a template for me to draw in the geology, and I think there's a, essentially what we've got is something like that, where the upper unit seems to bury a lumpy material underneath. I'll just add the unit underneath. Something like that, just color in the material on top. Again, using the same shading texture as I did before, just to bring it out like that. So that's all I've done is really simply sketch cross section literally a minute minute to do it and now I'm going to annotate it so right Sliok for the mountain top Loch Marie at the bottom and I think these are looks like something is filling some paleotopography burying a hill so that we have I'm going to interpret this as layered sedimentary rocks basement underneath Okay, let's put some orientation on this. So looking at the map, I've done a cross section now through there. So that's more or less that way, northwest, southeast. The total width of that section, if I use my span, is 
one, two, three, four, five kilometers. So, five kilometers northwest, southeast. That's about right. It's about what, almost sort of the right sort of proportions. And a snap. So, there we have it. So it looks like a, a little, I'll just label this on lap onto Paleo Topo. This looks like it's Old Valley, Old Hill. Okay, there we go. Some more annotation as we go just to provide the take home message. So we've got a summary, which is a sketch and of a cross section and the input data we get from this view. This then provides a template that drives going in there and actually looking at the rocks, adding data um, so we know where to go. There's some places we can target, perhaps going up these on-lap surfaces, perhaps over the Paleo Hill, maybe trying to get some structure within the basement that lies beneath those sediments. So we can use the reconnaissance view to target the more detailed uh, investigations. So that's the mountain sloch, pretty neat stuff. Let's head down and have a cup of tea. It is typical that when you finish doing your sketching, the sun comes out and the hillside is superbly lit. There you go, sloch and Loch Marie.